right so let's see this reaction what is this reaction teachers now in this particular reaction i already taught you reaction with sulfur and sulfur dioxide now very like specific reaction what is this now whenever uh, sodium hydroxide basically whenever like uh, this is quite common to all the reactions whenever some there's some reaction between two reactants what what conditions uh, depends on it depends upon temperature correct it depends on it is every reaction specific with certain temperature it is specific with certain pressure it is also specific with stoichiometric ratio isn't it it's going to we need to see that balanced reaction stoichiometric ratio also right now there are two conditions what are they first important thing if sulfur reacts with sodium hydroxide i'm speaking about balancing the, uh, the sodium hydroxide one more sulfur reacts with sodium hydroxide i'm going to take different different moles of this right let us see the product three important products are formed first for this it is going to form sodium sulfate here when i change the number of moles let me balance this when i change the number of moles the product formed is na2s2o3 and the leftover sodium sulfide here also sodium sulfide here water molecule here also water molecule this is quite common what is this now let me balance this when this this the if the balancing is here in both the taste cases stoichiometric ratio is different so here in this case the first product formed is sodium sulfate now here in this case what is the type of product form this is called sodium it stands for thiosulfate sodium thiosulfate so this is sodium sulfate so remember this sodium sulfate and sodium thiosulfate two different products so let us come back and balance the reaction Right. Now I've balanced the reaction. Now this reaction, suppose further, if I'm going to treat it around 600 degrees centigrade, right? So what will happen to the sodium thiosulfate? It's going to again break up into sodium sulfate and colloidal sulfur, right? This is how it's going to further decompose into, right? So these are the reactions for uh, sulfur, which depends upon temperature. It depends upon specific pressure and stoichiometric ratio. This is the concept which I picked up. If it is eight moles, I'm going to get sodium sulfate. If it is six moles i'm going to get sodium thiosulfate which further uh, decomposes or uh, converts into sodium sulfite and elemental sulfur right so please note the reaction right now this particular reaction i've already written this i want to explain something important in this now when sodium hydroxide reacts with white phosphorus right so we have white phosphorus red phosphorus black phosphorus also is it right when it reacts with white phosphorus uh, with the unit p4 unit there are two products formed right now <coughs> what is this here what should you remember here the sodium which you are going to take is cold and concentrated solution this is what you're going to take sodium hydroxide now there are two different products formed in the exam you have to be very careful right phosphorus is white in both the cases right the stoichiometry is different in both the cases but the product form when you're taking eight moles of sodium hydroxide the product form after balancing right what is this this one form what is the name of this disodium name this as disodium hydrogen what is this this is phosphate now what is this compound when you're taking three moles of this the product form is called phosphine and name this compound the name of this compound is sodium there is no disodium it is only sodium it is two sodiums here so disodium here this is only sodium hydrogen phosphite so remember this right so it depends upon the stoichiometry of the reaction when it is eight moles you're getting disodium hydrogen phosphate when it is only three moles cold condition you're going to get sodium hydrogen phosphide so these are the products please try to practice it you will get to know the product right now let's see this question what is this question states write the reaction of boron family elements with sodium hydroxide okay right so boron family what is that boron family uh, boron uh, boron aluminium gallium indium thallium isn't it right so they're asking us only to speak about our boron family the first two elements that means they want us to show the reaction between boron and aluminium both why am i not taking the remaining elements because they lie very much low in the electrochemical series they can't replace your sodium isn't it 
so i'm ruling out the remaining so the left over is boron and aluminium let us pick up so first important thing i'm going to take sodium hydroxide i'm going to add boron in the second case we are going to take sodium hydroxide you're going to write aluminium as i said remaining all they lie in the lower in the reactivity series the lower one can't replace the higher one isn't it so left out now what is the product form here in both the cases hydrogen gas is evolved done so now next important this is going to form a salt that is na2bo3 this is called sodium borate this is also going to form a salt that is nalo2 this is sodium aluminate what is this this is called sodium borate and this is called sodium aluminate aluminate so remember this aluminate so in both the cases hydrogen gas now let us come back and balance this reaction Right. Now let's see this reaction. There is a reaction with ammonium fluoride and sulfuric acid. Done. So I've covered all the major reactions or major uh, major products for which you should remember. Right. So what is the speciality of this? Basically, when I have a, a sodium hydroxide is reacting with ammonium fluoride, there are two products formed. Right. So like uh, there are two ways to form the products. Just see. First case is this is going to combine with uh, this one by double displacement reaction. This is going to form ammonium hydroxide. Plus ammonium fluoride. This is all oh, this, right? The pungent smelling gas. Now, second important thing: this sodium hydroxide also combines with ammonium chloride and it releases or it uh, forms pungent smelling gas that is ammonia gas, right? Fine. So you have sediments of uh, uh, ammonia also released, isn't it, from the kidneys? Yes. So this particular thing. What does it form? This the product first formed is ammonia. This is your smelling gas, right? Ammonia gas. After apart from this, this is also going to form just like this. Ammonia as one is over. The next O NaCl. So I wrote this wrong. So this is NaCl, isn't it? Yes, I'm sorry. So next O uh, salt is NaCl along with this water molecule, right? Let's see. Ammonium hydroxide double displacement reaction. Sodium chloride out. In this case, as I said, this also forms ammonia gas, the pungent smelling gas, right? And NaCl as well as water molecule. This is one. This is one type of product formed. So any option may be given in the exam. You need to correct. Uh, put the tick in the right option. Now when I take sulfuric acid reaction. So basically, sodium hydroxide, common, quite common reaction, a base reacting with an acid, right? Acid plus base, what do we get? We get salt plus water, isn't it? Nothing big in this. So this is sodium sulfate plus water. Directly, you write the product. But what is important here? You need to remember. When a base, like suppose here you are taking sufficient quantity of base and sufficient quantity of acid, both are combined together to form salt plus water. But now, if you are giving insufficient amount of sodium hydroxide, you are not giving the required amount, insufficient amount of sodium hydroxide here, then what happens? It's not going to form a product directly like this. In the exam, they may give you if insufficient quantity of sodium hydroxide or caustic soda is given to you, predict the product formed. This is where you need to be careful. What is the product form? Now let us take sodium hydroxide. I am going to take sulfuric acid. Right. Now here, instead of sodium sulfate, it's going to form sodium bisulfate (NaHSO3). Right. Along with this water. This is where you need to be careful enough.